So let's uh, give a warm welcome uh, to, in the chat to uh, Melanie, Robert, and Braxton. Thank you so much for joining Crime Time with Duty, Ron. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, I want to say right off the bat, first off, uh, Braxton, you get the uh, Hero of the Year Award for working the camera and taking the, the video that we saw. So uh, mom and dad uh, should be very proud of you. you. You listened to directions good and you did a great job. How do you feel about that, pal? Good. <laughs> mom if you could uh you know walk our, our audience uh, through and, and the audience here are you know pro law enforcement and you know supportive of great american heroes like yourself and you may not think that you're a hero but i have to say what you did that day was the only recorded information uh available right now not only just the pro to the public but to the corrections officials and police so what you did was a great great thing and as uh retired law enforcement professionals me and ed wallace over 45 years in law enforcement we uh we commend you for what you did um so congratulations on getting that footage uh you and your son um any thoughts about that day um I'm really not sure where to start. Um, Hello. This has been so stressful since then. Um, I have to actually, I'm so stressed. I have to think about every single thing that I'm trying to say. Uh, but yeah, we were, um, Thursday we were on our way home from school. Um, and when I came up over the hill, I saw um, Jewett police officer sitting in the middle of the road and the big white bus was kind of off into the ditch up to the fence and at first i thought that they were having maybe a car, car trouble or blown tire or something and they were just trying to get the vehicle off the road because there's not a curve to pull up on um next thing i know um there's um an inmate coming out and Kate went to the fence jumped the fence and took off running, and that's uh, the point that I I realized what was going on. Um, it, it was, I wish I had my video camera going at that time or asked Braxton to, but it just took me a little while to process just what we were witnessing. Right. Yeah, and you know, things happen so quickly, and you know, you don't expect to come across something like this in your everyday travels. And you and I spoke on the phone earlier today, and you were saying how peaceful your community is and, and how you're not used to this type of, you know, excitement. So it, it definitely was something that would catch anybody off guard. And as we could see, the corrections uh, professionals on that bus, they were probably caught off guard, too. And the local police officer that was trailing that vehicle um, was seeing it driving erratically. So. Um, again, you know, what you, what you experienced and what you saw that day, I don't know what that noise is. Is that like, um, is that a phone? What is it? That's my phone dinging. Oh, okay. Oh, All right, yeah. it's, and, it, it's loud. Uh, you're, getting, you're getting messages because you guys are stars right now. Actually, the, um, lead, um, sheriff investigator answering some questions I was just asking about the drones. Oh, okay. Great, great. Any, wow. any, uh, any insight on that that you can talk about? Um, he, he did. I asked him specifically that if they were using drones and he said many drones um, okay. have out there. So that I can guys with that. Um, so um, he, right here, he just said this, it's getting dark. They're getting ready to run 10 sets of packed dogs with two planes overhead tonight. So, I've been tracking. I'm, I'm a pilot also. Okay. So, um, so the plane that they've been using, and Gene will be familiar with this, is the uh, Pilatus. They uh -huh. bought it a few years back, I believe. They've been using it down there um, on the border mostly for the um, uh, the illegals crossing it and stuff. And cartel down there. But they've had it up here about every night doing circular patterns. It'll be here two hours. It flies back to Austin fills back up, which is about a, I believe about an hour flight for that. And then they're back up doing patterns again. Right. Uh, but Gene will know what kind of more uh, equipment they have in that. It's going to be more thermal equipment. And stuff like yeah. And they that. have the LIDAR uh, flare on the on the pod on the wing. Yeah. yeah. I'm familiar with it too. Uh -huh. 
So that's so that's good stuff. You can cover a lot of ground with that, and that's what's yes, important. Yeah. You know, uh, the neighbors and residents and, you know, it's a it's a rural community. You're you're, you know, farming community. Right. Um, it's there's not houses bunched on top of each other. Um, what's the sense of the folks in, in in your community? Is everybody worried? Everybody scared? Just let the audience know what's happening in, in Leon County and in your community. Well, so we are a very, it's a very, very tight knit community. So it's a county of 17,000 with about five little, what we call like little small towns, 500 people to 900. So Centerville's 900 people. Um, most people are rural, lots of ranchers, a lot of, uh, this part of Texas is hilly, lots of trees, heavy trees, heavy woods. Um, and Melanie hates me for saying this, but most people and i have a lot of patients do not lock their doors mm -hmm. it, which, it's, matter of fact she's gonna hate me for this too but it took us about a half day to find our keys for our doors to lock <laughs> <laughs> I, I totally get that i i feel mm -hmm. we were the same way and we just hardly ever locked our doors either yeah. But now we lock them every day when we leave it, it, it's a in major inconvenience so on, on that also, everybody takes care of everyone. Everyone knows everybody. Um, and the community is all together. We're all together. I even started a Facebook group for the search area because there's so many people all over the United States that are getting on our local pages, Facebook pages. And it's Trying just, to stay updated. and it's so many rumors. So I started in the search area, a Facebook group, so we could keep a track of no rumors, but exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so, that's and support being, each other. Yeah. Yeah. And so, the, and if I may ask you a question, um, there's a lot of, from, from what I've uh, done down in Texas, there's a lot of nocturnal animals down there, uh, especially wild boar uh, and uh, some other carnivores that are down there. He's going to have his hands full if he doesn't find shelter. Uh, yeah. So you're, you're right. Um, it's a big hog hunt down here. If you've never been here, hog yeah. hunt is just, it's just like going down to the local swimming pool in New York, I guess, and go swimming. Mm -hmm. Everyone's just like, let's go hog hunting. No, and I've done hog hunting down there uh, oh, in Texas, yeah. outside of Dallas, uh, at night yeah. with the Texas Rangers. Uh, it was yeah. fun. So there's two kind of hog hunters here. You have the hog hunters that go out with the night vision, the rifles, and take them out. And then you have your tough hog hunters, who are mm -hmm. usually your ranchers and roofers, that go out, jump off, hog tie them, and load them up and take them and sell them for meat to, to people. Oh, so, oh, that's not, I mean, this is normal life to us. It, it's it's just, good barbecue. It is good barbecue. Yes, it yes. is. <laughs> so um, we've got that. Then you have your, what's big down here, rattlesnakes, water moccasins, and copperheads. Yeah. So that's going to be a big thing that this guy is, is going to uh, deal with, with that environment. Heat, mm -hmm. humidity is, is out there right now. We've had that. Um, and then the helicopter reported, I think it was yesterday morning with their vision that they, uh, um, in the area, they jumped up a black, uh, panther. Whoa. And so we do have panthers run around it's years. People say, Oh, there's no panthers. He jumped it up and sure enough. And we've known in our area about a five mile radius here that there's a couple panthers running around and, uh, sure enough. But have they been taking a toll on the ranchers? No, you know, we don't hear too many ranchers. We hear a story every now and then yeah. uh -huh. of, of some evidence of them attacking from the back. Okay. Know. So Melanie, could you tell us how you rolled up on, on the scene? Did you did you drive towards the front of the bus or come up from it from the rear? Or how, how did you approach? Um they were I guess they came from, I was leaving Centerville and they were going towards Centerville. But I guess at the point in time when I saw it, I was worried about where the guards were. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any guards at all the entire time I was there. The only officer I saw was a local Jewett police officer in his car who had evidently been following the bus and had stopped when the bus wrecked. And I was very concerned about where the officers in the bus uh, shot, killed, hurt. Where were they? Mm -hmm. um, while this um, inmate is running off, 
um, the the Jewett police officer is just standing there. Mm. He's not doing anything. He's not going to the bus. I'm thinking, why isn't he going at least checking on the officers on the bus? Right. Um, so he so he didn't see uh, the inmate run away. Uh, yes, he you, saw. Oh, well, he did, and he didn't exit his vehicle or anything. Uh, he did finally get out, but he stood by the vehicle. Um, Is that the officer you and your son told? Uh, that we drove real slow. Right. By. He's in the video. Yeah, right, right. And you told him, and you, you know, go look in the. He's over there in the woods. Yeah, man, it, he had he had fear all over his face. He didn't know what to do. Uh huh. And what about you, Braxton? You didn't seem to be afraid. Are you taking that camera and you got that uh, the white uh, uniform running through the woods in the background? Well, I was really devastated when I did see it all happening because it oh. looked like there was a movie scene. <laughs> like the back of my eyes. Yeah, it felt like one. You may be too young for this, but when you when you get off the show, go to Google and look up the Bigfoot video, okay? Because uh, <laughs> that's, what, that's what your video reminded me of. The guy in the white, it was like Bigfoot walking into the woods. <laughs> yeah, but I could tell the way he was running. He was slinging his arms side to side. I knew yeah. he did not have anything on him, no shackles whatsoever. Did you notice if there were any other prisoners in the uh, bus when you drove by? I could hear every one of them. It was oh. eerie. They were all yelling and screaming. I heard, I found out later there were 15 other inmates on there. Wow. Um, and only two guards. And I been told there's supposed to be three, but they were shorthanded, so only had two this time. Well, that's news. Okay. Uh, that doesn't bode well. But no. I'm glad to hear about the drones and then the fixed wing aircraft that are up there now doing their pattern searches. Uh, nighttime is probably the best uh, if they're going to be using that forward looking infrared um, um, to do this. Uh, Gene, you have anything to add? No, that uh, that Pilatus is uh, is a very nice aircraft. It has a nice long loiter time. Oh, yeah. uh, it can it can fly slow if necessary, and or it can fly fast. I mean, from Houston to 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 Austin, and my one hundred and seventy two is is typically you know two hours. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know it it's got a pretty good cruise speed as well. And uh, man, that's uh, the the Taze ball that they have in there. The Taze duo, I'm sure, is what the one that they're they're flying with the. Uh, uh, it has both night vision and clear. Yeah. So uh, it's got a NOG on board, and they're, they're probably uh, scanning the heck out of it. I'm sure that uh, they're covering a lot of ground while they're at it every night. Hey, I'm, I wanted, uh, I'm sorry, Melanie. I, I, I didn't mean to talk when you were talking, but I wanted to ask you guys, based on what Gene just said, and some of the people in the chat are, there's a lot of folks who think that this guy is down, in, you know, gone into Mexico. What's the feel of the folks of, you know, um, of the county there? Does, does every, I mean, everybody's going based on what the law enforcement and the, um, you know, the, the TDJ, uh, CJ is telling you, right? Um, what, do you what do you guys feel? Um, how, do, how are you guys taking this? Like, They're saying they think 95% sure that he's still here. But the more this every day that goes on, I think more and more people are beginning to think that he is he's left the area. Right. But there's so many houses like we're in a rural area where there's camp hunting houses and old abandoned churches to um, what else? Um, just structures like that. Weekend homes. Because we're in between Dallas and Houston, and those people come here and just have a weekend place. So there's a lot of structures that people are not going to all the time. Yeah. What if you're hiding out in one of those? I mean, yeah, they're vacant. Yeah, good this yeah. whole time, and nobody's even been in there to look. Yeah, there's, yeah, my, so, there's so many possibilities at where they, where he could be. Yeah, yeah, well, my family has a large spread of land on the Mexican border, um, south. Uh, southwest of San Antonio. And uh, they had a few um, ranch houses on there, but they leased the land out to hunters. And the hunters go there and they'll, they'll, they'll use the cabins. But um, recently the, the cabins have been destroyed by illegal border crossers uh, going in there and sheltering there for some period of time before they moved on. And we won't even get to the border right now because we can do a complete show about that. Uh, I want to show with your permission, Melanie, the 
infamous 28 second video that Braxton uh, recorded. Um, you shared it with me. I think this is a real high res, um, you know, when the news was playing it, it looked a little fuzzy, but this one looks pretty clear. I'd like to play it with your permission, if that's okay. All right, here we go. Uh, this is the video that they recorded on the on the day as they were driving by. So I'm going to go full screen with it, and let's play it. Oh wait! Oh wait! This is not it. Okay. So that's the Texas Department of Public Safety helicopter? Right. Yes. Yeah. Did you yeah. guys record that? Yes. Okay, so that was from your phone. I'm gonna just I'm just gonna pick up the next clip, but I want to let the rest of this play because it actually gives our audience a good look. This is the day. This is 20 minutes, 15 minutes after um this all occurred, uh, Melanie. Correct me if I'm wrong. They were gosh, that was a few was, days after it was Friday. Friday. So that yeah. The okay. escape happened about 1 o'clock, 1.30 Thursday, and then Friday um, afternoon, I'll make this quick, Melanie was at lunch with me. They called Melanie and said, hey, the, the uh, DEA guy that we know real well called Melanie and said, are you home? And Melanie said, no, um, I'm in uh, uh, Buffalo, which is 20 miles north of us, uh, where we just ate lunch. And he said, well someone has just called in that he was spotted back behind your house on the other side of the woods. And so we're all headed that way to search. And uh, it's like, wow, here we go. So uh, they canceled all my patients. And I said, now let's go to the house. And she said, I'm not going to the house. And I said, no, no. Was, you know, you just, you feel strong, supportive. And I'm like, let's go. I want to be there. I want to be in my home. I've got guns and we'll be okay. So, we went ahead and gave them permission to go ahead and go through our house, which it was locked, but she couldn't remember if one of the doors was locked, but it was. And uh, these guys are awesome that we know. And they, even though it was locked, they went through our doggy door and still searched our house mm -hmm. for us. And then they proceeded on back behind us. And then when we got home, these that's the video we took of um, the helicopter. They were there about right. four, hours, four yeah. hours searching with ground yeah. crews, dogs. dogs. They said the dogs picked up a scent that were headed towards our house. So that's why they were so concerned about us mm -hmm. here. And then four hours and nothing. So then they went back to the original place that they'd been searching for like five days. They stay on the same location for five days. Same location. It's one square mile radius. It seems they will not pull away from that. So... There's a, that's the anyway that's the video of the helicopter. Hey, hey, Gene. Um, any any um any like kind of commentary on why they would stay in that one particular place? Um, maybe they felt strongly that he was holed up in a certain area. Like, why are they searching and researching the same places? Well, one of the things that uh, is just a premise for any search doesn't make any difference whether it's a missing person or not. Uh, you want to do that two mile probability of area. And two miles is basically, if you look at it, it's four square miles. Right. So you wanna scour that four square miles just as thoroughly as you possibly can to ensure that that individual is not there before you move on to the other. Uh, so, you know, that's just a, a basic search premise, uh, place last seen, uh, probability of detection is is uh, is the highest there to begin with, at least statistics show. Obviously, this guy is wanting to evade and willingly be missing. So that ups the difficulty factor significantly more because regardless of whether it's a drone or a helicopter, the, the Pilatus is going to be a little bit more difficult because it is a high altitude aircraft uh, and it can still see... <laughs> Uh, pretty good ground resolution from altitude. Uh, he's going to do as much as he can to evade, but they're going to want to try to get that area where the the event occurred scrubbed as thoroughly as possible. How's the uh, night uh, been down there? Has there been a lot of cloud cover? Is there because um, we've had no. a full 
No, we, no. We have had clear blue skies, and uh, it's been a little windy. Right. But uh, we have not had any weather. It's been very conducive to any sort of operations at night. Uh, and, and pilot parlance, we've been visual flight rules for the last two weeks. Great. Right. Uh, and, with, and we've had a, we just entered a full moon cycle in the, yeah. in the beginning of the week. So um, I doubt, you know, what, without the uh, nods, I doubt he's moving around too much at night. Uh, you know, and that's probably one of the reasons they're they're staying close. They're thinking that he is not moving. He's hunkered down somewhere. Uh, you know, he could have any. You, we could speculate all day long, but uh, uh, there is a good possibility that he's hunkered down. He's found a place that is relatively safe and secure. He's going to let everybody kind of you know work themselves to the point where they're tired and about ready to give up, and then start making a move. Yep. But uh, again. You know, if you can keep eyes in the sky, whether it's a drone or a Pilatus or anything else, 24-7, that's when he's going to slip up. Something, a foot's going to stick out. Uh, you know, you're going to have to dash to go visit Mother Nature or something like that. And he's going to get caught. Right. And somebody in the chat just said, Judy Fisher said, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night knowing he was somewhere out there. The difference is, uh, Judy, is this community, um, I would say 98 or 99 percent of the residents are armed and they're not afraid to use their weapons. You know, we we hear of counties down in Florida, Polk County. Uh, you heard Grady Judd, uh, the sheriff. He said uh, if, during the, the summer of 2002, when there was the, the riots over the George Floyd uh, situation, he got on national television and said, my residents and my, my, my people of Polk County are armed and they're dangerous. Do not come and try to burn our houses down, because if you do, I've instructed my residents to shoot, to kill. And, and I was I, I couldn't believe that I heard him say that, but I was so proud and happy that he did say that. So mm -hmm. I feel that this community here um, is uh, they're not afraid and they're going to defend themselves and they're going to defend their property and their families. And and, and that's the difference. Um, you know, they're not gonna it's a down. small community and everybody knows everybody down there and they know when things are out of, out of order. They know when things are, you know, just not right or, you know. Right. And so. Robert, I can't imagine you were in this situation without having my gun rights and being able to have the right to carry and bear arms, especially right now. I can't imagine just having to sit vulnerable in my home, you know, not feeling safe to even walk outside. You okay, know. Yeah, what I happen out here, and I know this is going to happen, will be me, would be Melanie, um, probably. And any man out here in this territory, if we see him walk our fence line, if we see a glimpse of him, we'll go after him to shoot him and then call 911. <laughs> yes, uh, that's correct. Take uh, care of business first. Yeah. I love yeah. it. All right. I finally got, <laughs> I love it, Robert. Uh, I took my cap to you. Kudos. I only wish that the um, the, the deputies on, on scene there would have taken care of business right away. Uh, once this guy became a fleeing felon in uh, in the um, in in the law of of the United States, you can shoot a fleeing felon. Um, you know, and and I think that um, I think that if they would have uh, had the opportunity, they probably would have. And let's just let's just hope and pray this thing comes to uh, a resolution um, sooner than later. But here we go, Braxton. I promised I would find it. You know what happened? Your mom and hundreds of other people have sent me so many videos and stuff. It got buried and I couldn't find it. So I I, I finally found it, kiddo, and I'm going to play it because here we go. This is um, two, two minutes and 28 seconds, actually. So um, it's a little bit longer than what we said. But this first frame in the middle right here where my cursor is, is that little white dot here. Uh, that's him. And we're going to see him. Um, I'm going to keep playing it back. I'm going to play the beginning of it. Uh, a couple of times so let's go full screen so all of the people here we've got almost 900 people watching so let's uh let them take a peek at what uh braxton and and, and his mom did that day this is may 12th right guys yes yes inmate oh my god the... yo we saw the inmate oh my god the heck? and that's him he's actually running off what do you say that is that about uh what is that about 
300 yards? What are we looking at there? Uh, I was just trying to probably just to that, as well. that point probably was. Yeah. Probably a good way to estimate that is Braxton deer hunt. Was that about as far as you shot that deer? <laughs> well, no, this what year? I shot my deer, I think it was 400 yards. 325. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. But, but, but you guys were on the road, right? Pulled, yes. are you, were you pulled over to the side or were yes. you just? Yes. Well, mm, there's not much of a shoulder. So I really, I was really still in the road. All right, so you pulled to the little to the right. Is it a two lane road or is it one way it's, each way? It's two two lane with no shoulder. Yes. Okay, so she's to the right side. Uh, looks like um, three to four foot grass uh, or you know you know stuff growing. Right, that that area is pretty thick, but where the bus wrecked, um, it it wasn't that bad. We're gonna see it. We're gonna see it. I think I believe in this clip. So let's let this play from the beginning. I just okay. kept going back over it because I wanted everybody to see. Um, right here where my cursor is going around in a circle is the little spot. I wish I could make this bigger. I know. Um, oh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm just going to do that. And um, let's see. But then I can't. Well, that gives you guys a better look right here in the in the center of the screen. Uh, that's him. And, and he's um, just marching off into the... Hold on a second, I can't. I gotta play it from here. Yo, we shot the inmate. Oh my god. What the heck? The bus is right up to the right there. I wanna stop it where so you guys can see. Okay, so right where her right rear view mirror is on her truck. There's a police vehicle straight forward on the opposite side of the street facing her. And um and and you can see the bus right here, right up over the um over the rear view on her passenger side. Um that's how close they were. And that's where he was at that time. Um and she passes just in a short time after this and says, He's out there. Uh, and he, so that, that cop you can see he's just standing by his car right there. Just yeah, standing I see him right here. Yes. Right there. See, now if they could have got an air asset out there as quickly as possible with that high grass from that bird's eye view, you could see his uh, path through the through that area. Uh, Eddie, uh, Eddie, the perp, the perp is just right here to the right of this. No, well, he's a little further away, but 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 the point is, like I said, it, Gene just agreed. If, if we would have gotten an air asset up there, you would have found that that yeah. path because uh, nobody traverses through there. So he's the only one going through there. He's making his, right. his path. Now, if you're on the ground and you're tracking, you're looking for sign, you'll see plenty of sign. Uh, you know, you see that the, um, the uh, foliage and the uh, indigenous plant life has been, you know, crushed by him passing through there. You might even find bits of hairs and fibers from his clothing and so forth, or, you know, they get caught up on stuff uh, and you'll definitely see footwear uh, impressions uh, running through there. So even a good horse, if you could have got a horse in there uh, immediately or some uh, after this guy, but or, he, or a local rancher, a local rancher with an AR across his back. <laughs> well, hell, I was just thinking, I was just thinking from that window with my three hundred eight, he, he's gone. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's let the rest of this play. It's two minutes and twenty eight seconds. I'm gonna let it play in its entirety here. Yo, we saw the inmate. Oh my god! What the heck? <laughs> Is that a diesel? Yes. See us city slickers pick up on that. <laughs> <laughs> I had a Glock right beside me too, but... There you go. Having a concealed handgun license, first thing they tell you is never shoot them in the back running. So, there you go. Yeah. I have my Texas concealed carry permit, but now you don't need it. Right. right. <laughs> so, that's just a little bit forward. I said I was going to let this play in its entirety, but she just moved up maybe 
five, ten feet, and that's the open area. Looks like yeah. there's a house out in the background there. Is that is that a house there? Uh, I don't know where the house sits. I've not been on that property in the house. The structures are kind of up in the woods over there, so I'm not quite sure. Okay. Um, that's that's a not a house right there. I think okay. if you zoomed in, I remember that's like um, round bells of hay or yeah. something right there. Yeah, it's hard to see. Yeah, yeah. There was a house open. Oh, crap. Did you hear what Braxton said? Everybody in the chat, he said, does he have a weapon? And what was your answer to that, Mom? Uh, I don't even know if I answered him. All right, let's, <laughs> let's, let's listen again. A gun? Weapon? Oh, crap. No. Uh, he tried to get one, but he couldn't get it out of the holster. Right. I, I didn't yeah. know. Um, oh, and I'm the one rolling the window up because we're close to the bus, and I'm nervous that another inmate may come out. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're rolling up the window for safety. Um, there was a lot of bugs out there. It looked like they were, they were swarming all around the uh, window. That's terrible right now. Mm -hmm. I know you were saying that in the long version of the video. They're going to watch it. They're going to watch it. Keep going. Okay. All right. Here we go. Going to pass that officer. Here's the guys okay. What guy? The, um... So there's the Jewett police officer, no. and he's out there. Yeah. I mean, he's just looking at the bus. Did Did you at any time see him go over to that bus? No, no. Um, yeah. I never saw the guards at all. Um, and. He was following that bus when it crashed. So even though, you know, it doesn't look like he got out and moved far from his car, he watched that guy get out just like I did. So now is there is there um um barbed wire fence that I saw there? Uh it's a field fence, so it's like square fencing. So uh -huh. it's easy to put I have it for my goats because I have a goat farm, and it's easy to put your foot in there and pop pop right, right over. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was wondering if there was any barbed wire that it maybe caught his no. uh, clothing or cut him or something like that. No. And there may be one strand on top. I couldn't. I didn't examine it like that. Mm -hmm. We're going to see it close up here, and I have some pictures that she sent to me. Um, uh, well, one picture of it, which is a pretty good picture, she took. Um, I think tonight, right? Sent to me. Yes, tonight. Yeah. Okay. He's in the woods. And what was his response when you said it's a, you, he's in the woods? I know. <laughs> yeah, that's what he exactly said. Nothing else. Just, <laughs> I know. Oh, wow. Even... All right, here we go. He's in the woods. Yeah, I know. They're all hollering really loud. It was kind of scary. Wow. I just want to see the fence again. He's in the woods. Yeah, it's three feet. And it was 15 inmates in that bus at that time. Yes. What and, the, and you were right. You were right, Melanie. The, the back door was shut. Yeah. Who bails out of the back knowing there's a confrontation with an inmate up front, out, you know, outside, and you're going to go to help, but you're going to take the time to shut that door. Now this is uh, this is the caged area in the back where the other correction officer is. Isn't that yeah. is that right, Ron? Yes, right. But he's not in it because, according to um, no, he Harris, jumped out. Right, he, he jumped out. Yeah. He jumped and out, shot out the back tires while his partner was wrestling on the ground with the perp. Yes, right. and then the perp got back in uh, the bus. Uh, mm -hmm. Lopez got back in the bus, drove it off with a flat mm -hmm. tire or two. We're not sure, um, and then. They ran after the bus after fighting with him all that time and caught up to it a mile. Uh, yeah, and the one the road. one guy had two superficial superficial stab wounds. But but after fighting with for your life, um, now you're going to sprint in a hundred degree temperature up the road um, a mile and a half down the road and catch up with the bus. Yeah, and right. then yeah. So no. hey, um, Rob, tell you one other thing that I, I want to put 
for your viewers and perspective. So if you were to make like a triangle, Centerville's on one corner, and then we're on Highway 7 that goes to the corner. Another triangle goes up to this town called Jewett. Like I said earlier, Jewett may be a town of like 500. So this police officer, he lives in Centerville, drives down 7, and then up to work at Jewett. He's a one-man guy, you know, small town, 600 people. I don't know. They may pay him 20000 a year. Wow. So, um, and, and everyone in the whole world knows him because he loves to give tickets going to that little town. Mm-hmm. But He's not a fan of the people. Yes. So he's also, have, and I hear this, I've heard this from our local PD, he's also known to not ever wear his gun belt, but he puts it in the seat next to him. And I cannot, and I'm telling you this in case you can zoom in and see. if he He's not gun, wearing a gun belt. His radio on. So he don't have his gun belt standing out there. I don't know. He might. So take a look at it again. I don't think he had a gun belt on. I think it's just a little oh, radio. He didn't. He so, didn't. Yeah. So he wasn't going to do anything. Hold on. Let me put that on. Now, at the time that he, at that location, he's out of his jurisdiction. Oh, he's got something on, I think. Hold on. I'm going to go full screen. Um, I have it zoomed in, so it's, let's see. Go back, go back. He's in, in the wood. I don't see your gun belt. Nope. You would see it. It sticks out. Yeah. Is uh, is this in this area right here? Is that's not his town that he's a cop in, correct? No. 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 It, it's it's not. Um, We're a few miles from Centerville, right here. Mm-hmm. Small, uh, small town. Centerville does not have police. Okay, so we're a rural area. So most of all of our town is the sheriff is what we use there, sheriff officers. And when you call nine one one, what's a typical response time for this sheriff? Probably ten, fifteen minutes. And folks, and that's why I keep telling you, you are your own first line of defense uh, when when seconds count. Uh, the cops are going to be minutes away, in this case, 10, 15 minutes away in the rural areas of uh, sometimes it's even worse than that, 20, 30 minutes away, depending on how large the county is. Um, and, where, and where they're at at the time. That's- exactly right. So you got to be able to protect yourself. You got to be able to uh, be self-reliant here. Ed, I don't see a gun belt. Nope. Uh, but if he was a righty, it, the gun would be on the right side, you know, right there. But you know, unless he was wearing some kind of pancake holster on his right hip or something, but he doesn't have a gun belt on, definitely not official, you know, like uniform gun belt, no, so ta- first, no taser. So the first officer on the scene is just somebody driving through or driving back home or driving from home to uh, his to his um, place of uh, place of work, his geographical area of employment. Yes, my understanding is that he saw the bus swerving and then he turned around to follow the bus. Mm-hmm. So he was just passing through. Yeah, yes. Uh-huh. That explains why he didn't. Show. I mean, I would have I would have considered volleying shots at, at that guy. I would have uh, freaking at least unloaded one magazine at him. Yeah. At that, at, at that distance with a handgun, you're not going to hit him. I, I was a good 25 yards. I used to I used to hit the target from 25 yards. I wasn't one of those guys. They do really? say that this that cop there was a marathon runner, and the local sheriff and everyone say have said he runs like a gazelle. They said he could attract him down in probably about 30 seconds. Is he, is he the Forrest Gump of the police department there? Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Um. So let's let the. <laughs> and all this you're fixing to hear, you'll see another. You'll hear a police car coming, and that's going to be. Was it the sheriff or DPS? That was all DPS. Officers. DPS. So we have a large, our little area right there. We're right on the interstate, I-45 that goes from Houston to Dallas, and we have a great DPS there, Department of Public Safety. That's Highway Patrol, and mm-hmm. great, great, great guys. Our sheriffs are great. Our highway patrols are great. They know everybody and they really take care of everyone. And so at some point in time, this call probably came in and you could immediately hear a highway patrol that was probably down just down the street there. So 
Wow. Yeah. So once the call goes out, we have to assume that they had an emergency call box in the um, inside the bus. There has to be, uh, and, and if there isn't, shame on them. But I, I would have to bet. Uh, I would, I, I would have to guess that there's some type of emergency um, uh, device in that bus if there is something that goes on. Once that's activated, then the troops start responding from wherever, and it depends on how far away. And I talked to you, Melanie, about this earlier is that some backup could be 20, 30, 40 miles. And if they're on a call, then they got to, you know, get rid of the, you know, call or the situation and, and respond. Uh, and depending on what the call is, they might not be able to respond. So that's the, that's the danger of this. But you, uh, I had asked you and you said time is really hard to tell like yeah. how long did it take for additional units to get there? And you said anywhere from five to 10 minutes, right? Yeah, it, it, it's hard for me to uh, determine that. It just, yeah, it was yeah. such an intense moment. You know, what seems like things happen fast, they could be really moving slow or, right. you know, right. it just, it's hard to tell. Look at this super chat coming in from Revenge. I don't know if you guys can see it on the screen. It says, good day, Braxton from australia oh, awesome. you are my hero you are my new hero well done you did great awesome. so that's that's for you braxton from australia so that's awesome crocodile dundee town and you know people argue that crocodile dundee wasn't from australia but put another prawn on the barbie that's what i the, said the right. real the real crocodile dundee had a bit of a criminal past i've heard just saying <laughs> All right, let's let's let the rest of this play because um, we have to give uh, Braxton credit where credit is due. Um, one more super chat's coming in from Joe Murray. That's our uh, attorney, uh, Melanie and um, uh, Robert Braxton. He's the one who um, who gave me the advice for you guys to you know give you the okay. So Joe Murray, criminal defense attorney. He sends in a super chat and he says, "What an amazing story! God bless this wonderful family for taking action." He, too, is a retired police officer from New York City and now a criminal defense attorney. Awesome. So, All right. Let's let, the, let's let the full thing go here, and then we could wrap it up. Um, I can't play it without it. Okay, there we go. I wonder if the guy's okay. What guy? The, um... He's in the woods. Wow. You can hear sirens in the background. Yeah, some, yeah you can hear them coming. Yeah, some go in the woods. So that's Braxton saying, I saw him go in the woods. Yeah. See, the rest of those prisoners couldn't get out of their handcuffs. Oh, everything went down. So here's the sirens. This is the troops coming, or one guy at least responding. Yeah, so it was, it was minutes. It wasn't. Wait, I want to uh, be on the news. Thing. You hear Braxton? Am I going to be on the news? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he ran, at the, he ran towards the house. Listen to this. Yeah, somewhere near that house. So I was in that house might want to be careful. Be on the news. <laughs> see it? Yeah, he ran at that. He ran towards the house. You think? Yeah, somewhere near that house. That's a so big ranch right the there. House, might want to be careful. Is that the entrance to the ranch right there? It is. It's also the staging area for this search right now. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, he ran at that. He ran towards the house. So that's it right there. Yes. Okay. Uh, how, big, uh, how big is that ranch? Oh, I don't know. It's a couple hundred acres, isn't it? Yeah, they they had it's purchased that about a year ago, and it's gonna it's gonna be. Gosh, when that was for sale, I think they told me it was two hundred and. It's 225 acres, something like that. Goes right. and it goes way back creeks mm -hmm. and other creeks. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if she sent you a picture of the bridge. There's a big creek right next to it. I, I'm not sure if she got I a picture of it. Yeah. It's, nice uh, to your legs a little bit in Texas. 
Here's, here's another couple of messages that I missed that came in for Braxton from MK. She sends in a super chat for 20 bucks and she says, for Braxton, I have family in Houston and League City. Braxton is a great kid. Aww. Thank you, MK. Uh, thank you so much. I'm going to read the next one because these are all coming in as we were showing stuff. So let me get to, we, we read uh, criminal defense attorney Joe Murray's and then one came in from Rocky Pastorino. Now, Rocky, uh, like you guys, is a, a a great American hero as well. He is in uh, Fernley, Nevada, and in the Naomi Arion case, she was uh, the young 18-year-old who was um, murdered outside of Walmart in uh, Nevada. And he, as a citizen, started a search group to search for her. And um, he became friends with the family, with her brother, uh, and he is, again, a, another true American hero in Nevada who took it upon himself to search for this girl. And he searched night and day and uh, helped. Um, he mobilized over 500 people one day and wow. they searched, searched the desert for this for for this girl who turned out, uh, you know, wound up being murdered by a sick, evil monster. Uh, but he is now behind bars and, and, and arrested. So um, Rocky sends in a super chat and says, fantastic job, you guys, citizens at their best. That's right. That's right. If you see something, say something. That's what it's all about. Absolutely. Um, so I think I got to everybody. Um, it, you know, these, these kind of situations bring communities sometimes apart. And they bring them together because there's mixed bags of emotion. Some people have, you know, uh, opinions on what people should do and shouldn't do. But I want to just say this as a law enforcement professional and as Ed can tell you and many of the folks who listen, Gene himself knows because he is somebody who gives um, himself and volunteers and is public servant in, in some different uh, shape or form. When you see um, somebody in need or somebody that is in trouble, it's uh, it's within ourselves and in humanity to do something, to help somebody. It's the same concept. If you see somebody fall in the middle of the street, you're going to go and offer help to them. This was correction officers in distress. Melanie and her son would just happen to be driving on Highway 7 and said, you know, something's not right here. And they took action and they did what they thought was the right thing. And it was the right thing. Um, but you have people who sometimes will question no matter what good somebody does, they'll question it. And you have to just pay attention to, you have to dis disregard the white noise. You have to stay focused on what your heart and your soul is telling you you did was right. So again, I can't overemphasize the importance to you, Melanie, to understand that there's always going to be the naysayers. Misery loves company. And, you know, those folks, if they were put in that same position, there's no telling how they'd react. Um, right. And you did the right thing. So um, kudos to you and Braxton. Uh, we got some police badges coming out to Braxton and some goodies and some police memorabilia cards from New York. And Ed, hopefully you can come through with the sheriff star for him. No, Ranger star. Different, Ranger. different. Totally, totally different. All right. Okay. So, All right. So All right. So I know you guys probably want to wrap up, um, maybe. But one thing that you played the video of the gentleman talking earlier, and I don't know if we ever got to that point to where the that's the representative for TDCJ. His story has been totally mixed um, from the start. He keeps changing his story. But he seems to be trying. He doesn't like women. <laughs> we can tell that with his interviews with the women when they ask a question he's really harsh his on demeanor them. changes and right? he's kind of almost i don't i don't know if the terminology would be shaman melanie or 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 what he's discounting or what, every time it's brought up yeah they're t what what's going on is we handed or melanie handed over that video within two hours from a tdcj uh workers and that, actually not just workers but these were like a warden kind of guys that were starting to drive the country roads and all that. So we were at home and we saw him and Melanie goes, I need to give that guy that this video, they need to get it to him so they can see where this guy went. And so she gave the guy uh, the video. It was actually 6 PM on that day. Um, and so he said, I'm going to get this video um, to our 
main guy, which is command to the guy in command. So they can see this and see what's going on. So five, six days, this guy that is getting interviewed just com constantly twice a day keeps saying, I don't know what video this is. I haven't seen a video. I wish he would come forward and let us know because we could probably use that, but we, we don't, we don't know who this woman is. And after three days of that, I got frustrated and Melanie didn't know this, but I called what they call the OIG in Huntsville, Texas. Um, Huntsville, Texas is like the head of the state of the prisons. So that's where all the offices are. I called there and talked to a lady and she said, Oh, well, we need to know this information. Let me put you through to command. And they put me through to what I understood was the main guy in command right there. Told him about the video, um, kind of what we have. He goes, well, we'll probably contact you down the road. Uh, we're, we're more worried about getting the prisoner, which is understandable, getting the prisoner now, but that video means nothing to us. And so it's just kind of a bizarre thing going on and they've got the video. The guy knows they have the video, but it just makes you discount the TDCJ. There's just some red flags with it all and his story doesn't add up. And, you know, why would you not want to have the video and look at the video instead of just taking your employees words for something, you know? Well, you did the, you did the right thing. And the bottom line is don't let this uh, dishearten you. And, you know, remember Galatians 6, 9, never grow weary of doing the right thing. Yeah. Okay. I have to say this, the, you know, the, the, the fact that he came on television with the reporters and discounted you, Melanie, I know what you're feeling because I got that same sense. Even before you told me that, uh, I watched it and I said to myself, well, why, why is he um, discounting video footage that I saw from, you know, yeah. another another news outlet, you know, Sarah played that clip right. before she before he was asked about it. And 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 there we saw him discount it. And, you know, it's like a kick in the pants to somebody that did something good. I feel that he should have been uh, complimentary and said, hey, we want to thank our civilians and our folks over here in um, in all of the counties, uh, Centerville, uh, you know, and, and the surrounding counties, because we need your help. He should be encouraging and, and giving thanks and praise for that, where he doubled down and pretty much discounted. Like, I don't know this lady. I don't know what she I mean, I played it for that reason. Um, I played it because I wanted everybody to see that. And we're going to continue to pound that home. And I feel that it's important that they acknowledge um, you and, 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 and encourage people going forward, because let's not forget, this guy is still a fugitive from justice. He's still out there. And we right. need somebody else, if they are to, God forbid, come up against this guy, to step up uh, mm -hmm. and not shut their door and say, well, I'm going to call 911 and button down the hatches. You know, and you, so, and you have a vital piece of information there. It is the last known direction that this guy was traveling. How do you dismiss that? that that's I ridiculous. It, a lot of this doesn't add up to me whatsoever from the inmate cutting through that wire mesh in the bus. The, or not mesh, but I mean, metal plate. yeah, metal plate. I mean, I don't even know how that's possible, but there's just so many things that, you know, that he has told us are what his accounts of what has happened from the, from the guards on the bus that just do not add up to what I drove up and witnessed myself. And those guards weren't even there. Yeah. I don't know how he could say they ran and shot at him when they were not there. From the time I left, when DPS arrived, four or five cars pulled up at the very end. And I was like, okay, there's plenty of help now here. So I'm out. Um, and, hey, I, I, I don't want to be critical, super critical of law enforcement, but there, were, there was red flags that just jumped out at all over me during that press conference. And, and I'm going to hold back now a little bit because um, – I wait to see when the dust settles because, you know, in the beginning of, a, of an investigation, there's a lot of chaos and the mis and misinformation is flying and it takes a while before things get um, organized and the true information comes out. But, but something he said there disturbed me greatly um, about um, the actions and I'm going to hold, uh, hold off until I hear a little more uh, because uh, I just, it just didn't make sense to me what he was saying. 
uh, about the actions right. of the uh, corrections officers. But anyhow, um, I don't know if you saw this, Braxton, but uh, one of one of our good friend from the Nevada is sending you twenty bucks. No. Yeah, we, we have we we, 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 we have a, we, that'll buy a lot of robots. We, <laughs> Braxton, uh, Braxton, we have quite a bit more than twenty bucks coming your way. So uh, I'll have to send it to mom. You'll have to trust her to divvy it up to you. So mom, before you know uh, tomorrow or whenever you know we get a chance, you're gonna send me me away PayPal or whatever how I could send all the super chats that were directed to him and you know you guys can use it as you see fit um all that's all of the crime time with duty ron family saying congratulations and thank you for what you did before i let them with the tipperman family go and is it is that am i pronouncing it right or is it tipperman tipperman Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. You know, my last name is Licardi, and people always say Licciardi or Licciardi, and I go, listen, uh, as long as you're close, I'm okay with it, all right? But uh, I want to show the inside of one of these buses. This isn't the bus, but this is the way, this is a similar setup to um, this Bluebird coach bus. And I'm only going to show the inside and the gate. Uh, and it's got the gate set up in the back for the guard. So I want I want you guys to take a peek at this because it shows the um the actual gating that encloses the driver and then in the back so i'm going to give you guys a little bit if you guys have time if you could stay yeah. uh, right. Any right. time now. Yeah. Right. Let's, let's, let's let's show this i'm going to go full screen with it and i'm going to let it play straight through and there's some narration by this gentleman who purchased this he's he's actually buying this from surplus and he's going to turn it into like a motor home so let's listen to what he has to say and this is the driver's seat with the requisite million uh, knobs and buttons and things on the side. I've actually got this all figured out now. It runs pretty well. Uh, it's got intercom system and a few little features left over from the days of uh, running prisoners. Um, this is a list I found on the bus. 82 cuffs, two chains, 13 leg irons. And then this one over here is actually a list of prisons in the state. This must have been the route the driver took. Uh, with all the prisoners. All right, so up front behind the driver, you've got this big old lockbox. And inside is not a whole lot of stuff, just kind of some boxes and trash and whatnot. Um, but there is this box of papers, a bigger kind of tour of the bus. Uh, you've also got a jump seat here for probably another guard or any passengers to ride on. And there's a phone system. There's actually three phones in the bus uh, that connect the driver to the two additional guards. And then this is the door separating the driver from the prisoners. And you can see it just slides open and shut. And there's some plexiglass on here. Um, inside the bus, it is in really, really good condition. condition. This is a 16-year-old bus. And there is not one bit of graffiti, not one tear on any of Two, bus security will remove chain procedures um, in case of emergency. Number one, stay seated. Two, bus security will remove chains. You will remain handcuffed. And three, passengers on the opposite side of the driver will be evacuated first. So over on this side, bus security will direct you to a safe area. So they were chained up in the bus, and it shows the bus is in good shape on the inside. No cuts or tears or graffiti or anything. Uh, it does have a couple of um, uh, emergency exits. They pop open for fresh air and are watertight when they're closed. It's also got these two big old air conditioning units, one on either side. There's one there and one here. So it was uh, set up with AC and heat. Uh, that's because none of these windows open. They're all wedged shut from the outside. Not welded shut, but they're just little wedges on the outside that lock them shut. Uh, in the back, you've got a stainless steel commode, and that goes to a black water tank underneath, and there's also a water tank. And um, then there's this other area here for another guard. So this back guard would be locked up in the back and uh, has a seat back here, emergency exit. And uh, let's see what else. There's a cup holder right here. And a switch for a heater. That's a heater underneath the seat for the guard. And there's the other phone. So the guard in the back can talk to the guard up in front. 
So there was a look at the front and back of these setups. This is obviously not the bus, but this there is the... 21 seats for prisoners, so that would make for about 42 prisoners here on the bus. So there's a good look at the gating, and this may or may not be the exact setup, but it just gives you an idea of what you have to... would. In this case, what you would have to cut through, what they described was um, a metal meshing or metal uh, 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 kind of underneath, like a there's like a pass through. And I don't know why or how they would think that that's OK to have. But um, this is just your standard uh, prison bus uh, setup. Um, and uh, I just wanted to show you guys this real quick. I hope that gives you a little bit a better yeah. of, a, you know, a, be a little bit of better of a view of what. Um, what the driver was looking at and what was going on. Ed, you got anything to say about this prison bus setup? Well, like I said, I would like to, uh, I would like to examine it myself, to be quite honest with you. I'm very curious about how he got through that, uh, that metal. Yeah. So in I mean, it's, it's just unbelievable, but um, so I'll let the, I'll let the, I'll let that finish off and we'll come back to us. Gene, we didn't get to talk about a lot of drone stuff, but we love having you here because you are a wealth of information. We're going to let uh, Melanie and her husband and, and, and their, son, their son go, uh, but definitely, Melanie, if you can, uh, send me the coordinates for how I can get the cash for the kid. Um, of course. So, yeah. Um, I'll tally up everything that we got in Super Chats, and I'll send it on over to you tomorrow in the morning when I get up. Now, Braxton, don't use this for junk food. All right. <laughs> what do you want to do when Braxton? What do you want to do when you grow up? What do you want to be? Uh, a YouTuber and a a prior factor like my dad. Oh, okay. Crack some bones, huh? <laughs> no thought to be in law enforcement. Never know. <laughs> yeah. I might need I one, but I'm not. My, but I'm. I might not become one. Okay. All right. We always you can use good men yeah. and women. Yeah. Well, I want to say That's thank you. I want to say thank you to you guys. Uh, you guys, you guys are a great family. Melanie, Robert, uh, and Braxton. Um, I'm hoping that you know maybe you would consider coming back to Crime Time with Duty Ron and hanging out with us uh, for updates. If you have anything additional that we can that can enhance us with the reporting and you know giving us an idea of what um, the makeup is of the, of your location of where you are. It, it's so helpful to understand, you know, um, it, it really helps with the story reporting. And I, and I think it's important that uh, everybody here, when they watch this and watch the replay, they'll get a better understanding of what, uh, what, what they're, what they're up against and how vast of an area it is to search and how heavily wooded and, uh, how many empty homes uh, that are there just for vacationing or seasonal hunting, you know? Right. Yeah. So, we appreciate you, uh, Ron. Uh, Melanie has gotten uh, messages from different places, CNN, which eh, we couldn't do CNN. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but when your message came across and she always talks to me, sends me a, a message on that. She's, she went to your video and watched the video and she repeated back. She goes, I really like this guy, Ron. I, I think I want to talk to him. I, I want, I want people to hear my story. And so you've been excellent. And we, I know she really appreciates you. She's had yeah. some breakdown moments today and you have, you have really lifted her uh, back out of it. So. Yeah. I really do appreciate it. Well, Melanie, it all comes straight from the heart. And when Ed and, you know, Ed and I were talking about it, and I told Gene quickly when, when, he, when he got here, we were all just thrilled to have you uh, come on with us because, again, you know, we did the job of, uh, you know, law enforcement for a long time, Ed and I, and now we're civilians just like you guys. So um, we have deep appreciation because we know firsthand that we rely on the public to help us solve some of these crimes or, or to be witnesses to certain situations like this. Uh, and, and you were instrumental and your son uh, having the wherewithal to start recording and Braxton, although we got parts of your door panel and stuff like that, you got all the main stuff. He got all the, he got the guy out in the field. 
and FBI and different, uh, you know, uh, software can enhance that and make it really clear and and, and concise. So it's it's really great. Uh, it look was at this. So easy for them to kind of push me to the side with having the information, but if it were not for social media allowing me to be able to post this and you guys see it and take it and and help me get the story out and my account of what happened and what I witnessed, you know, it would have been easy for them to push me aside, you know, back before we had YouTube and Facebook and all these ways to get information out, you know, they would have pushed me aside and nobody would have heard this. Nobody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why I thought it was very important for me to reach out to you. And I didn't know if you were being overwhelmed with uh, comments and people wanting to interview you. I just simply wanted to get uh, a better a better understanding of what went on. And and you helped do that uh, for me. And then and then yeah. now here you are telling your story. So it's fantastic. Thanks for giving me the opportunity. Yeah. Do you guys know what the uh, what um, Texas Ranger Troop covers your area? Rob knows more than law enforcement. The Texas, than which Texas Ranger does? No, the troop. Yeah, what Texas Ranger troop covers you? Like Troop B, Troop A? Do you know? Oh, that I do not know. I know we are, you know, we're mostly DPS in this town. Um, mm -hmm. sheriff, sheriff, like I said, the sheriff's office is our county. And then um, we have DPS, which is Highway Patrol. Mm -hmm. And I, I couldn't tell you which, which one it is exactly. I could not. All right. When I get it, when I get off the uh, video with you, I'm going to call my buddy over in the Texas Rangers and uh, see if we can't get him to swing by your place and, and meet Braxton and give him that pin. That would be. Uh, That's even better. So mm -hmm. special for Braxton. It wow. Super, super nice. Yeah. That would be so awesome. <laughs> While Z Pony uh, sends in a $20 super chat and says, Braxton has a future in law enforcement. Thank you for the video and audio. You are a superstar. Um, there's just so many comments coming through for you, Braxton. It's just unbelievable. Um, the, the replay would be worth your while to watch it and just look at all these comments because I can highlight, um, I can highlight these things all night long. Uh, but, uh, a lot of love pouring out in the, in the chat for you and for your family. Don't forget Braxton, you did this with your mom and, um, you guys were a team that day and your father's. Uh, assistance was there guiding you so um everything that your dad taught you uh and your mom uh, came into play there and, and and it's it's such a great thing so um i have still photos from the scene i have a bunch of things feel that free she to use anything i've sent say again feel free to use anything that i've sent you okay, okay. and uh ed that would be alpha company of the texas rangers alpha okay thanks gene for looking that up <laughs> all right thanks. All right, so uh, I'm going to let the Tieperman family go. And we've had them an hour and 29 minutes. So um, much love and respect from my house to yours. And beyond, on behalf of Crime Time with Duty Ron and this community, you got a new family here. You can come on anytime. You can message me. You guys can text me. Uh, Robert, you got my cell. I'll share Ed's uh, information with you. And Gene, if it's okay with you, I'll share your information with them as well. Absolutely. All right, great. So right. thank you, Braxton. Mom and dad, you guys are awesome. We'll see you guys again. And then we're gonna All right, Braxton. We're gonna continue again with Gene. Wow, wait a minute. Hold on, Braxton. Before you go, look at this. Boom. Way to go, Braxton. I'm going to catch the replay. It says Montana Mama. So, all right, guys. Good night from New York and good night Thank from you. Texas. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank Bye -bye. you, family. Wow, what a wonderful family, guys.